hello everyone today let's uh, see how a keycat can be operated so uh, that's the topic of introduction to the keycat so the keycat can be operated by opening a new project so you have a project which is something similar to this this is actually the main the the keycat uh, the project window where you need to select the project and you need to open it so the basic procedure is you need to create a new project here so when you create a new project you make sure that you select a particular directory before you choose and uh, create give a name for this uh, project file and save it so once you open it you will find two files which are getting created automatically one is keycat schematic file another is a keycat pcb file so let's open keycat pcb file which is this is a keycat pcb file which i have already created so the keycat is usually used to you know create a pcb layout as well as the schematic circuit so this is the schematic circuit that we have designed so once we design the schematic circuit we need to create a pcb so here is a sample pcb so this is a sample pcb which we created using the keycat and once you do this design you can actually send it for the fabrications so if you want to have uh, uh, many features you can mesh make a measurement of these uh, bolts and we can provide uh, mounting holes and all the alignments you need to do and finally you need to export it to the gerber format so which you could do it here now uh, before that you also have a feature called a 3d weaver with which you can weave uh, the 3d visualization of the component which uh, somewhat you know uh, looks like this this is the 3d visualization of the board so this is the uh, the board that we have designed so today i'm going to uh, tell you how to use the basic functionality of a keycad and so that you can design one such board so we will go through some of the fundamentals of this keycad so what i can do is so okay so this is the window that we got in the keycad menu so let's quickly go through some of the functionality of different uh, options that you can use to create the schematic the first one is a wire label you can he see here this is called as a wire label so you can use this wire label to uh, wiring to make the connection between the two point okay so we could see here pin number 5 to this capacitor there is a connection so that is made using the wire so another thing that we can do is the power ports this is called as a power port here you get you know the ground symbols and all and uh, the vcc symbols okay uh, sorry the power flags you know all these symbols are taken from the power flag and you have this uh, labels this is called as a label here and you have a global label here so this is a global label which you use to uh, provide the global label here vcc is a global label and uh, uh, label uh, i think yeah this thr is a label so you can use this thr label okay apart from that you have few more uh, the symbol editor you have okay this is called as a symbol editor and uh, you have uh, electric rule checker and you have a pcb layout and you have a footprint editor and you can also find uh, bill of material netlist generator and uh, annotate the circuit symbols okay so these are some of the and finally one more is called a uh, gerber plot you can generate the gerber uh, plot so or the printing printing this okay so let me uh, quickly go through the keycad i'll show you here in this keycad okay so this will actually the plot the schematic okay now so let me create one such board here for you so as i mentioned so this is actually the placing the label for the component and this is for the placing the symbols and this is to place the grounds and power ports and here is place wires and i'll think these options not required now we'll strictly go to this place net label sometime we need to label these wires and this is actually the global labels we can use it for interconnection between different sheets so these are some of the you know quick uh, 
uh, you know tools that we you need to use one important thing that you need to uh, understand here in this keycad uh, we should also use uh, these zoom in and zoom out options so this is something very useful so you can zoom the components and you can see the connections clearly and zoom out also you can do here so when you zoom in uh, probably you better use the shortcut key f1 okay it's written here f1 to zoom in so just press f1 and uh, you see this cursor where you want to place where you want to zoom in you can zoom in to that level okay in that particular direction only zoom in similarly zoom out so that's a very you know the beautiful facility that we have apart from that you can also you know fit to the screen if you want to fit this page onto the screen if it is somewhere else you can fit it so so let me take it to the zoom in so, okay this is a normal view so now let's quickly build the circuit once for that what i will do is i'm going to uh, create a new component for this so okay let's create a new project here so what you do is just click here uh, sorry okay so what i need to do is just click over here and just create new project so it will uh, open up a new folder for you so what you do is we can create a folder here as test and inside this folder test i'm going to make my first file as ir uh, transmitter so transmitter okay this is my ir transmitter keycat file so let me open this so as i told you you will get two files created here ir transmitter and ir keycat uh, the uh, the pcb file so let me open this ir schematic file so let's create a simple schematic so before you start doing the schematic on this so let me name some features on this page so if you see the page details this is a sheet that you are supposed to fill it so what you do to fill the sheet you just go here and just click on the page setup page setting so once you do click on the page setting you can just start with the revision this could be first revision and uh, my title is ir uh, transmitter okay this is my ir transmitter and i put my name as sukesh rao m and that's it so say okay so these details will appear here in your sheet so that's the first thing that you know before you start because uh, you're supposed to give the name of the author who designed the circuit so let me quickly go through the circuit that is put up here this is an ir transmitter circuit and i need to design uh, this kind of a circuit okay so let me quickly uh, uh, put up some of these components just to tell you how we can start using this keycat so what we do need as i told you these are the tools that you need to navigate starting from the selection tools and then the place comp place symbol that is the components that you need to place and uh, power ports and wires so these are the four important thing apart from that place net label and a global label okay these two are somewhat used then so before you start you need to make sure that okay this grid settings are supposed to be on so otherwise you here you can't see any more grids here so if you want to make a grid so that you can align the component very well you can see here the grids appearing okay so this is this setting you can do it with the grid and if you are interested to have a unit in mm then you click on this mm otherwise on inches this will give all the dimension between these dots as inches otherwise it will be on mm so better will go for mm so now uh, let me start uh, putting the components values which is this so i have few resistors few capacitors and uh, one uh, transistor and uh, LEDs okay so what I do is I click on this place symbol so once you click here it will be selected but component to add it you need to click it anywhere on the sheet it will first time it will load all the components onto the sheet okay so it will load all the components once the components are loaded you can start selecting the the components that you need for example I need 55 timer so what I will give is I'll just name it here 555 so there are a lot many 55 series here so let me select one such series for the dip package this is more sufficient for my purpose there are other series you can choose accordingly so this is the lm555 timer that i'm going to choose 
you save it here you click it over here see this is the component that we have added here then we'll add some resistors here so you need to search here in the filter box as resistor okay so you get this resistors with potentiometer everything there are millions of devices here see you can find here a resistor r simple resistor choose it and place it okay similarly we have a potentiometer here to be added so i say potentiometer so there are a lot many types of potentiometer i am looking for a r pot this is a potentiometer i use this r pot and i will add it over here and i need a capacitor also in the circuit so just side capacitor so capacitor will be selected so the capacitor is this is the device under this unpolarized capacitor and polarized capacitor one which has a polarity other doesn't have a polarity what i need in the circuit is non uh, polarized so i'll go for unpolarized choose it and save it so if you want two capacitors what you do is you can just choose a component use the selection tool select the component just make a just a drag it will be placed anywhere place it over here just make a selection control c and control v you can do it and you can place it otherwise what you need to do is right click over here and just press duplicate it will give the duplicate of the component i'm going to delete this similarly i need a resistor here select this and you can place it wherever right click and just say duplicate so i can just bring the duplicate component wherever you need i mean in it here then if you want to you know uh, change the the orientation of this component either you can right click and just do the the rotating clockwise or anti clockwise wherever you want so shortcut key is given here as r so i'm going to press the shortcut key for this okay i'm going to use the shortcut key for this just press r you can move it around wherever you need so this is the the way in which i can use it so now for example in the circuit shown this pin number 7 and 6 supposed to be on the right left side and these pin supposed to be comes to the right side so what i need to do is i need to flip this particular component sometime we need to flip it for that just select the component and right click and just do the mirror mirror in the y axis just use a mirror of y axis it is vertical alignment that will change see here i mirrored it now pin number 3 appears here which was here so i am going to use it in this way so now what you can do is i can quickly add all the components required like diodes and leds so the transistors again same way you click over here and just search transistor so it will be uh, see here transistor bjt so i don't have ck100 either i have to create a component i think i'll choose a pnp transistor of uh, bc series i think uh, yeah bc160 is uh, more enough for my purpose i'll use bc160 here a pnp transistor okay and i'm going to use an ir led so what you do is just search ir led it will list out some of the components see this is ir led or this is also an ir led so use whichever you feel just press r and change the orientation you can rotate it i need one more component right click duplicate so you can place it in this way okay now i need to add ground so to add the ground components you just click on this here and you can just select here and just search ground gnd so the first symbol that appears is gnd ground so use this and place it over here similarly if you need multiple ground select the components and add it over here okay wherever you need so now i am going to quickly make some connections between these components so let me relocate these uh, components wherever i need to place it so and finally you need to place one more component that is actually the battery power supply for this so later i can assign some footprint for this component so i'm going to press battery so battery single cell i'm going to use it and i need a switch also click here switch switch is called as spst 
which is single pro single single pole single throw this is the switch use it over here so so let me uh, quickly rearrange the component by moving it around okay so i have rearranged the placement of this component once you place the component using this mouse select the components and move it or else you can also uh, select the components and just use the shortcut key m to move it around everywhere and position it properly so that you can make the wiring okay now let's see how to uh, use the wiring so before you make a wiring i would like to suggest you that just do a right click and choose a grid view so this grid selection can be done with many uh, you know the, the the resolution of this movement of this component that you want to choose if you want to have a, a placement with 10 mils resolution you can choose 10 mils if you want to with 1 mils choose 1 mils i suggest you to keep 10 mils because uh, if you keep it in this uh, level you can easily connect the wire wiring nodes here so the node can be easily connected otherwise the connection becomes difficult so i suggest to keep it at 10 mils so now use a wiring label so this is the wire so let if you want to make a connection what you need to do is so you can see a uh, plus this uh, the mouse pointer symbol and place it at the bubble of the component node see here for example this is the the battery that i want to connect it to the switch here i need to connect it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the mouse position so you take this symbol as a place wire then you place it just place it over the bubble here carefully it should be inside okay inside exact at the center of this bubble so center of this hole so select it now move around to wherever you need to connect it so just make a connection so this makes a perfect connection so what ensures that you are not makes a come for example if i am going to place it over here and that i am not going to place it exactly at the center you see now the connection is now it has not made any connection you can see there is a square the green color square box appearing here which indicates that there is a connection error so it should not be made in this way so i suggest you to exactly place the the mouse pointer so delete it choose again start with the center point of this circle and place it over here similarly i'm going to quickly make this connections so just to do the connection as in the circuit diagram so let quickly makes the circuit connection so you need to make the circuit connection in this way now let uh, if i want so i have partially completed this connection but few things i need to tell you see in the circuit diagram as you look here the pin number 2 and 6 are supposed to be shorted so if i need to short pin number 2 and 6 i need to take a wiring something like this here so it doesn't look good because i have a ground connection to be made here somewhere here i need to make a ground connection so i cannot uh, it is not recommended if you you know override this connection it doesn't look you know good so what do you do in such a scenario if you want to uh, make your connection still without connecting this using a wire what i suggest you make you can make use of the wiring label so how do you go uh, for using the wiring label see uh, there is something called as this pin number 6 and 2 supposed to be connected to this end okay between this 2.2k and this so this is the point so i am going to use a wire label so click on this wire label and paste it over here and this thr we call it as threshold okay this is my threshold so use this as a wire label and now use a wire and connect this point over here how i can connect even this point now that is actually the threshold okay this point is called as threshold now i i can even connect for example what i will do is i'll connect this point over here okay this is 6 but now this pin number 2 supposed to come here so what i will do is i'm going to okay control z i'm going to make a connection so first let me make a connection over here now i create a wire label that is thr is my wire label 
and I'm going to use this wire label to this point. Okay, this is my, sorry, you need to place it in the center of this and connect. So this is THR. So if you want to make this THR connection over here, so what you do, just click on this wire label again, click over here and choose now the wire label that you need from the drop down box. Use it here, place it over here. This is the THR. So automatically that THR refers to this here. So let so this are now interconnected. Similarly, if I want to make a connection from pin number three to this, I uh, let me use another way, way. This is called as using place global variable. I'm going to place a global variable here. Just click over here, name it as output. This is my output. I'm going to name it over here as an output, and I'm going to connect it to this wire. So this is how it is done. So I connect it. I want this output to be appearing at this section. So what I'll do, I'll again place, press at this global variable and just place the cursor over here, click it and drop down box, you select the global variable as output which you already created. So just click over here and now make a connection. So this makes a very simple connection for you from, so you did not have to route uh, from this section to this section so that looks very clumsy so I think you can avoid uh, by doing this kind of connection so so this is how you can use wire label similarly if I want to make a VCC connection to this pin number 4 I do not have to tap the connection directly here what I will suggest is just use a power label here use a, use a global label here click here and you say this as VCC okay some label you need to give it as power which would be plus 5 volt or anything you wish you can give the label and connect it between the this is my VCC and I'm going to connect it to this so what I do similar thing place it on this global label click over here use the drop down menu select VCC and say ok it will appear here if you want to change the orientation of that press R it will change and place it neatly wherever you need so this is how the connection is made so you need to be careful so so this is how the connection supposed to be made uh, okay now I'm going to quickly connect all other components okay here is the circuit connection that I have made here for the connection that is given in this okay so let me now go through a few things that I have uh, not told you here uh, apart from adding this threshold so adding the value editing the component to edit the component for example this uh, edit uh, need to edit this component then click a mouse cursor over this component and press E you can edit the component okay so now this component value if you want to edit you can just give the value whatever you want so if it is a 1k resistor so you just say 1k and that's how you can edit it and say ok to this similarly if you want to edit this capacitor here I need to give a value so just edit here and give the value as if it is a microfarad 0 0.001 and micro we use the symbol u and farad as f so say ok to this similarly all other component especially the passive component value can be modified now the next thing that you need to do once you allot the values to this you need to annotate the schematic the annotation symbol is here so this is annotate schematic so click over annotation schematic and say annotate it will annotate the value so Annotation means it will assign the values like D1, D2, D3 and R1, R2. All same category component will be symbolized with the some unique characters. Similarly, most of the time the ICs are labeled as U1, U2, U3 so on. Transistors are named as Q1, Q2. Similarly, the resistors are R1, R2. Potentiometers are RV1. So there are different labeling. Switches are SW. So that, that naming is done so that we can use it in the bill of the material so bill of the material you can get it over here so you can see generate bill of material so this bill of material can be used for buying the components so if you want to buy the components if you need to get some numbers so you can use this bill of material symbol you can actually use uh, you can generate the bill of material in one of this format and it will generate it to the csv format and you can export it so we can have a look at that later now 
so once you uh, do all these assignments uh, once all component values are assigned so next thing that we need to do is the footprint assignment that's a very important stage so for that you need to go to the footprint editor so either you need to click here and select the footprint it will load the footprint whatever available in the library for all these component and uh, you need to choose a particular footprint for the respective component so this footprint addition so we, we can use this foot so this procedure may take some time unless it loads all the component so uh, do not press any of the key unless it completes the loading so this is the footprint editor uh, here you can see lot many components are here for which the different types of the footprints are allowed see here you can find under many different footprints like this these are all smd footprints and these are all you know smd footprints so similarly you can see the capacitor through hole so you can see these are the footprints for the capacitors so there are different types of the footprints so what we need to do is we need to assign the footprints so how do we assign so which footprint i need to assign which component what you need to do is uh, for assigning the footprint for all these components you can just start with here uh, the tool section under tool section you can see assign footprints so that the same symbol is given here so this is assign footprint so i'll just use assign footprints once i need to uh, assign the footprint you can see all the components and the symbols used my in my library okay in my component uh, sheet uh, all these are loaded so the battery I need to assign a footprint with the barrel jack so that's a kind of a footprint that I have to get it and even capacitor I need to choose it under capacitor you select capacitor through hole and choose it as a pole I mean the pitch width as 5 mm for this capacitor so that you can select it here which is under disk capacitor that is 5 mm that is here yeah that's here this is the footprint similarly I need to choose for another one so what you can do you can either you can copy the footprint and paste it to the next component or also you can view the put footprint if you want this is a footprint that is supposed to be added so and similarly we need to select all the footprints so these are the footprints that I have selected depending on the category that I have choose here so all some of the times the component footprints by default is going to be there otherwise you need to select the footprints accordingly and add it so for this design I have selected the footprint in this way so every component the so LED you search here LED and choose a 5 mm this is 5 mm LED and uh, BC546 again under transistor you can find here under transistors you see here see here this is transistor transistor uh, that is actually the package that is SO package so TO SOT you can see here TO SOT is actually a transistor package so TO SOT 92 you can find TO SOT 92 so this is a package okay so this is the package that is added for this similarly the resistors you will find a package under resistor here you can find it over here resistor through hole is here under this category you choose it similarly with the potentiometer you can get it over here potentiometer through hole and uh, switch you can get it you can put a terminal block so terminal block you can use it here whichever the pitch width you want similarly LM35 LM555 so so you assign all the footprints that is required and say ok to this and uh, finally you need to make one design rule check ok so in case if you're finding a design rule check uh, probably you get a design rule error for uh, the power okay so it says that the u1 pin number 8 is not driven so the you need to add a power flag so I will tell you how to add the power flag so what you need to do is if you want to add a power flag especially when you're getting the design rule uh, electrical error you get it because this, this pin number 8 is not defined as VCC for the design rule electrical error so if you need that you need to add a power flag either using the power port or the component you can use anything so I will use the component I search for power flag so I just search for power flag you can find a symbol here power flag add it over here and make a connection 
and once you do that so zoom in and do the connection so that's it so once you do the connection just go for design rule check and simply run it so design rule message comes as finished so that indicates the design rule electric design rules are perfect for the circuit we can continue doing the schematic i mean the layout so how do you perform the layout to perform the layout i will use this uh, i need to create the netlist for that i will just generate the netlist so my i need to click the option here for generating netlist under tools you generate the netlist and say generate netlist so it will generate the netlist with some name in the same folder where you create the file so just save it the netlist is generated the next procedure is once you completed the netlist generation go to the pcb mode here this is the pcb mode now here first thing is to decide the board edge okay so once you get this particular uh, uh the layout mode you need to create a board edge so how do you create a board edge for the pcb for that you need to use the edge cut select this layer as an edge cut and use the add graphics lines okay use the option for add graphics line so if you want to make a square shape so here uh, one thing that you need to remember is the the dimension that you're looking for it should be in mm and i my i need to set my grid view so let me put my grid view as you know in terms of uh, probably it is in mils here so i think let me keep it at 1 mils so or maybe i think 1 mm you keep here point yeah this is better i guess 1 mm 1 mm i will choose because small dimension i can adjust it in millimeter so use the mm, grid put it as 1 mm or whichever you feel convenient so i need to make my board edge as probably 50 mm by 50 mm i want to design a board so i am going to use uh, first to make a board edge of 50 mm by 50 mm so i will choose this layer as edge cut and i am going to use this add graphic line option so you can see here uh, wherever you move the curver you can find it that the the x and y coordinate values are going to change so actually the x0 y0 is somewhere on the the sheet here okay so but so i think it's here x0 y0 is here somewhere in the top corner so this is uh, the the origin and it is x uh, positive and this is y negative so on so now what i'm going to do is i need to relatively choose somewhere on the sheet my x and y so i will choose this my this point okay this point as my x0 y0 relatively for that you need to press the space button on your keypad press the space button space button and you can see here dx and dy values here is changed to 0 0 look at this i have choose here and uh, let me start it here this i want it just press here so anywhere you press space that is taken as relatively x0 and y0 okay so from that onwards i will point dy as minus 50 that is 50 mm and from there again minus 50 and again so on so i will make a i will give, create a graphic okay so i will start over here I'll choose this as my origin. Press the button space, and now start with dy as 50 mm. So this is my 50 mm. Perfect. Click over there again space. Again start another 50 mm to the y direction, x direction. Another 50 mm I'm going to choose. So click over here, right click, then so left click here, then again space, again start. another 50 mm perfect 50 mm click over there space end of that again start with the d y again so here it will come see here just press it over there so that completes so this is my 50 mm my 50 mm okay so this is the board so now to this board i need to insert all the components how do you do it 
So for that you just go here and use the option load netlist. Use a node load netlist option. Choose the file that you created in the schematic that is the .NET file. Open it and update the PCB. Yes. So okay. Okay. So this is the the PCB that I I just uh, you know the footprints that we have actually loaded. So I need to choose these footprints one by one. What you do is you use the mouse cursor here, place over the component and uh, use the shortcut key M and you can move the component wherever you wish. That is easy. Similarly, this is U1. So I'm going to press M on the keypad. The component will be selected and you can move it everywhere. I can choose this R. This is the, the, the capacitor. Press it over here. You can load it everywhere. So D1, D2. Similarly, hold this. Move it wherever you want. Similarly, this resistor. Again, shortcut key M. Over the component, press the key M. See, first process is to load all the resistors and capacitors switches wherever you need load it on the PCB inside this PCB so let me have let me load this component and press here again see each and every component I'm going to take it to the Otherwise, you need to make a long press. So, sometime the label will be selected. So, I think better use the shortcut key M. Place the cursor over the component. Press the M key. Click over here in this component. Press M key. You can move the component wherever you wish. So, move the component wherever you wish. So, it is always recommended to keep the component nearby the track. So you can place it over here. So I will just randomly place all this component inside this. Okay. Somewhere here. Okay. So this is how I inserted all this component inside this. Now. The next process that I need to do is the tracking. So how do you do tracking? For creating the track. You need to use this mode. Okay. There is an option called route the track. So, and you need to select which way you want to track. Either you want to track it on the, since these are all, you know, top uh, surface uh, through hole devices, you should use the bottom copper option to use the tracking. Okay, we have to use bottom copper so that I can easily track the, I can make a tracking for this component. So, how do you track? So, just zoom in, similar key key, what is F1 and F2 for zoom in, zoom out. So, use this in the bottom copper. Use this track layer and now start tracking. See, always track supposed to be done. Do not use a uh, tracking of this way. Okay. Do not use a 90 degree turn. So, this is a rec not recommended tracking. You should not use a 90 degree turn in any of the track. That is not recommended in the PCB design. So, what is suggested is you should at least maintain a 45 degree turn so that you can, so that is uh, gives a better track routing so what I suggest is so and the thickness of the track how do you decide thickness of the track to decide the particular thickness of the track you need to change the design rule here so you can just click over here edit predefined sizes okay click over here it will go to the net class here okay use the design rule as a net class so now in the design rule you need to specify what is the track width that you want to choose is it 0.25 mm since it is in 0.25 mm 0.25 millimeter let's say you want the track width as in mils let's say 30 mil you want to use track width what do you need to do for that you need to first change the unit instead of mil you just choose inches so once you choose inches it will opt automatically updates in the the mill rating. So I'll just go for edit predefined size here. So go for the net class. Now you can see in the mills. Now the track width I can set it to let's say I want it for 30 mils. 
I want a track width of 30 mils and the clearance I want it at least let's say around 10 mils or say 20 mils let me keep the clearance clearance between the track so these are the track clearance and I think uh, rest of the things I will not use because uh, I will via size the standard track width track mils so say ok so this is the the required uh, the track width so now if you make the you see here it has become now thicker now I am going to make the connection now click on every uh, component hole here and use the tracking yes so this is a way you need to so this need to be done for example now you need to connect this point to this point so what is the best way I can take a connection something like this I can move around something like this but okay I came here then I came here came here then okay fine okay now I need to make a connection uh, between this point and this point but I cannot do because already one track has gone so I need to do a connection in such scenario what I need to do is I will create a wire so see you take till here maybe somewhere here okay let me take it over this component okay and I'm going to double click here it will stop or I can just do the right click here and you say that place through wire just do this and you locate where you want this wire to be I want my wire to be here now click over here and now you need to shift to the top copper and now start so this will be treated as a wire okay and stop it here right click place through wire so wire should be placed here one second place through wire you need to tell where you want wire wire to be here okay one second let me repeat that something went wrong Okay. Okay. Control Z. Okay. What I suggest is now see we already placed a wire here. Need to go to the top copper. Start from there. Place it. Stop from there. And stop the wire over there. Right click. Place through wire. You need to place a wire. I need to place a wire. Okay, or else you have add wires, click over here and place a wire here. Just escape. Now continue with the bottom copper. Now I can take this routing from this point and I can continue here. Yes, so this is how it makes a connection. See, wires are generally, you know, uh, it, if it is in the single board it's just a wire connection that we make on the top if it is a double side PCB it's a copper layer that comes on the top that's the only difference so the wire supposed to you know uh, will be drilled out of the PCB it comes in the top layer of the PCB and it helps to uh, move through from bottom layer to the top layer or the multiple layers depends on if you are going multi layer PCB so this is actually a single uh, single layer PCB that I am doing but here wire is just a wire connection that we make on the top of the PCB this wire hole serves just a hole okay with the pad so, uh, the, so you need to make the connection in the similar way throughout the uh, the scenario here, I mean whatever the connection that is made here so make sure that uh, it doesn't overlap with the uh, connection to each other and uh, another important thing there is an option now so if you want to go for auto routing there is a feature you can use auto routing you can refer to some of my auto routing video to get to know how exactly auto routing is made so 
let me complete the connection for this okay this is the connection that i have made for the circuit so using some uh, rearranging all the components and then uh, routing it carefully i can i can make a connection something like this so now here I have made some labeling on the top, so on the bottom copper, so this is the bottom copper I made a labeling. So what you need to do for labeling, you need to click on this text box and place it wherever you want and type it whatever you want, hi. And uh, you need to choose a layer where this is supposed to appear and depending on the layer that you choose, it will appear here if it is in the top copper, it will appear in the top copper as hi. If you want it in the bottom copper, use it in the bottom copper. So this is how the labeling is done. Once the labeling is done, you need to actually export the file to the Gerber format. Click over here. You can just uh, use the Gerber and just the uh, output directory can be changed here. And say plot, the Gerber will be generated. You can send it for fabrication. So that's how you start doing the design. Starting from the schematic editor from this and take it to the PCB editor that is this and then generate the Gerber file. Thank you.